We've now figured out that it's time to upgrade our boiler. What things do we need to be thinking about in mm -hmm. terms of, of the options? There's a lot of new technologies out today, and how do we think about those technologies and which ones should we be considering? Sure. Yeah, I think, I think fuel, fuel choice is you know, kind of the first thing, because that, that, that'll direct you to some, some different um, equipment choices. But if we think about um, the way we look at it is we, we have a little formula that converts the different fuels into a million BTUs, and then we compare. You know, what is the cost of um, an electric water heater per million BTUs? So you, you plug in your, your, your fuel cost, and the way it breaks down Elect electrical resistance heat is the most expensive. Oil and propane, believe it or not, are neck and neck. So oil at $3.75 a gallon versus propane at about $2.60 are very equivalent in terms of cost because oil produces more BTUs per gallon than propane does. So you have to, you have to adjust for their... their um, BTU capacity, and, and yet we have natural gas at about a dollar forty to a dollar fifty a therm, so per hundred thousand BTUs. And when you when you work each one of those out to a million BTUs, you'll find that natural gas is is is, is half. So when we you start to couple these things together and say, okay, we've got a lower cost fuel option, I've got. The, we'll, we'll, we'll touch on this in a minute, the ability to get equipment that's more energy efficient in terms of its burning and the combination of outdoor reset, you have you know, a very powerful argument to look at, at equipment replacement sooner rather than later. So I think the other piece is when you think about the older equipment, if you have a boiler that is venting up a chimney, you are in the low high 70s, low 80s in terms of, of fuel efficiency, in terms of combustion? Best case. Best case. And I think you, you needed, in order to produce a draft in the chimney, you needed heat from the flue. And that, you know, as equipment got more and more efficient, you saw a switch to fan-assisted equipment that went up the chimney. And now we're into an, an era of what's called condensing equipment or high efficiency. It's above 90%. So not to get too technical, but when <clears throat> we now encourage the lower the water temperature, the better, because we have equipment that can actually withstand flue gas condensation. Right. When we talk about some of the differences in uh, boiler technology, systems that are 15 or 20 years old and older are were most likely cast iron, and and they were fired in an efficiency rate of low 80s, mid 70s, or worse, depending on their condition. And they always vented up a chimney. So in order to, to create a draft, you needed enough heat left over after combustion to create a draft in a chimney. New technology um, has allowed us to raise the efficiency from th you know, the mid 70s and, and low 80s up to the mid 90s. But in doing that, a lot of things change. We, Older, older boilers, cast iron, couldn't handle corrosive flue gas, which would condense if the boiler water temperature is too low. <clears throat> so new equipment, this is a, a wall-hung boiler that is called a condensing wall-hung boiler. It actually wants the flue gas to condense so that it can extract the last bit of heat out of it. Now that would damage an older cast iron boiler, but the new boilers are made of materials like stainless steel, cast aluminum, things that can handle the flue gas condensate. So they actually encourage it, and that allows the efficiency rate to rise into the low and mid-90s. But in doing that, they lose the heat that was left over before, so they can't vent up a chimney. And that's a consideration for homeowners to make sure they understand that this, with this new technology comes some differences. What you see here is because there's not enough, not enough heat left over, which is a good thing, it can't go back up the chimney, so it has to directly vent outside. And so this, this particular product has fresh air enter here from the outside, goes through the heat exchanger with a gas mix, burns, 
puts its heat into the water, and then vents back out. So you can have flue gas temperatures of 100, 150, 160 degrees. So it no longer needs to be in metal pipe, and it doesn't, it doesn't have enough heat left to go up the chimney. So that's a consideration for, for homeowners. Um, reset control. Yeah, so what we, what we talked about earlier, adding, adding a reset control to an existing piece of equipment, this is now included in the logic of the newer boilers. So all of your new condensing uh, wall hung boilers or floor standing boilers will have this this uh, smart control that includes the outdoor reset. So that feature is built into all, all of the new equipment. Can you say a word about why you want the in air intake going directly into the boiler? Sure. There's a, there's a, this, this is called sealed combustion. Many older boilers that, that vented up the chimney, once the burner stopped, the, the cast iron sections were still warm. So you still had a draft going and you're drawing all of your air from your living space. So there's a, there's a few issues there. One is that you're pulling heated air from the building out and up through the chimney and it continues to draft until the cast iron cools down. So you have a lot of what they call standby loss. Instead of trapping and holding that heat for the next cycle, it cools off between cycles and has to be reheated back up. Not to mention all of the air that you had, you had spent money to heat the air, you just went up the chimney. So that, that, that's how a lot of efficiency gain is made. When this turns off, there's no draft that continues until the next cycle. Um, and we also want to be able to control the, the air, air flow into the piece of equipment because what it's doing is this, this fan, which is assisting the flue gas out, is also mixing the gas into it. So it's, think of it as a um, you know, kind of fuel injection as opposed to, so it, it speeds up and slows down, changing the firing rate of the boiler from 20 or 30 percent up to 100, sort of like a, a rheostat on a, on a dimmer switch. So it's very, very accurately controlling the firing rate based on this logic that we talked about, this outdoor reset. You can also get very efficient oil boilers. If you're in an area where you don't have natural gas mm -hmm. on your street and you have a 30 or 40 year old boiler that maybe is, you said 50 or 60 percent efficient, right. what, what might you think about there? Yeah, I think there, um, oil has been a, a pretty efficient product for quite some time. So you, you, you can find certainly a typical oil boiler will be 85, 86, 87 percent efficient. And there are a couple of manufacturers who make a 90 percent efficient piece of oil equipment and there's a couple that make a condensing oil. It's, uh, that, that's a discussion to have with your contractor about uh, kind of the pros and cons of that, but, but you certainly can get oil equipment very close to 90 percent. 